Thank you all very much for joining us to celebrate uh, the remarkable life of Peter Orlovsky. He was uh, an incredibly loving man who could be incredibly violent and uh, mean. Um, he was uh, charitable to a fault. He would spend every penny if we weren't in a position to kind of hold back some. The last days of Peter's life were very powerful. Um, there were only several days at this hospice, at the Vermont Respite House. House, but it was a time where I was able to do one very important thing, which was to get him as much ice cream as he could possibly eat, which was my deal uh, with him toward the end. And he had an opportunity to have visits from people that uh, had long relationships uh, with him uh, toward the end. I chase you down along the river. I'm in love with a 22-year-old saint boy who loves me. I ran into painter Robert Levine. We went up to see his paintings, walking up Sutter from Foster's Cafeteria, where I went one night, drunk, to dig subterranean scene. Luckily, I was also an animal lover, so like the trail of crumbs leading into our bedroom for the pigeons didn't seem to phase me. <laughs> Uh, when we went separate ways, I fully expected to be damaged by what I'd witnessed and what we had been through. And yet, curiously enough, I was not. Instead, quite the opposite. What, st what still sits deep inside of me about our time together is gratitude and all that I learned from Peter. As and if it wasn't for the dookie, I would tell you right now. About this old man, he had the one cow. He led it to the fields to be fed. But the worst of it, old drummer dropped dead. Oh, you're sweeter than down. He would arrive in our apartment and seek out the hidden jerk. For example, he would drag the heavy refrigerator away from the wall and with great attention would dust the coils behind it. On February 21st, 1965, he happened by Peaside Bookstore at midnight on his way home and saw that it had been broken into. Peter nailed the door shut then left a note apologizing for not staying in the store all night long to guard against further burglary. Um, but he went to the agricultural high school out in Flushing, Queens, which, believe it or not, has now reinstituted an ag program. <laughs> um, and long before the Eat Local moment arrived, he would drive into New York, as Miriam said, uh, with gallons of his apple juice and vegetables, and um, we would load up his Ford Galaxy with a hole in the floor and drive into Albany with boxes of rhubarb and try and give it away in the poorer neighborhoods. Yes. All my crying stops. Mystery fills the air. I look for my shoes under my bed. A fat colored woman becomes my mother. I have no false teeth yet. Suddenly ten children sit on my lap. I grow a beard in one day. I drink a whole bottle of wine with my eyes shut. Of smoke on the horizon, shapes of clouds, and Goey Jimson's song over the river. I read your St. Francis at Washington reading and tell my friends, hurry, get this book. I know worm droppings are $15 a pound. I'll have to go to study city's sewage blueprints and dream of vacuum flush toilets. Remember Alan and me walking to East River around 17th Street and there saw 
the sewage flow about chanting devotional mantras gesturing mysterious fingers bells and brass thunderbolts in their hands I notice flame rising above flags and wires and umbrellas and painted orange poles I notice the sky so throw up you stupid believed he was here to clean up the world. One time he got a parking ticket and he went down to the courtroom. The judge said that'll be $20. Peter said, take 25. Your windows are dirty. And pulled out a rag and tried to scrub the windows. I watched Alan's famous friends talking poetry and politics in the kitchen while Peter scrubbed the bathtub. He seemed intimidated by some of Alan's crowd, sometimes almost hiding behind Alan, looking strained and nervous, trying hard to fit in and be sociable. Some of them were in fact rude and dismissive of him, thought him childish and not too bright. They ignored his poetry that was in its raw, innocent, outsider beauty equal to anyone's. I've been feeling extremely good, so good that living doesn't seem like a big negative problem as it did before. There's a big blue-eyed mystical looking 19 year old girl here who likes me and I like her. So the world's a little bit like heaven now. Then a parenthesis, just had to add water to the beets. And, and he spells that correctly, B-E-E-T-S, all right? Peter loves Bessie, our Jersey cow, nuzzles her, feeds her ears of corn, kisses her, utters lovey doveys. One day Miles sees him bring her into kitchen, feed her cake and apples, coo and cackle over her. Alan shouts, take her out, take her out, she mustn't come in here, she'll come in again without being asked. Pain is memory that stays the same. I relish lines that astonish with unsuspected truth, make me say, yeah, that's right. Pain is memory that stays the same. Well, I came tonight not just to elegize Peter Orlovsky, but to give props to his living poetry. I've written justice is illusion, a myth, but if justice were possible, Peter Orlovsky's poetry would be read, promoted, studied, and revered. I don't like sorrow to hang from my family tree or other family trees. So I say we all sleep with each other in the sea for one month, except me. I gotta go to the dentist, but I'll be right back, bodies. I see myself as a nameless asshole in the world. That's fine by me, because then I can fall in love with colors. My black mama and me hold hands to look into each other's lippy eyes. Hooray! I got married on the page just now, did it all by myself, no middleman, and if I stay alone, I'll be okay in feeble dropping pencils into my hat, or kissing elephants on the back, or love my heart like a piano thumb, and between my teeth I'll not die sadly, but let my tongue give its last warm lick. And the first person I saw was Peter, who like ran up to me, grabbed my arm, and put me in a corner and said, um, listen, you see Alan over there? Uh, yeah. Uh, do. See, there's this pile of poems next to him, see that notebook, you know, and there was a robe putting Alan off, and he said, uh, you know, Rosenthal and Wiley and all, they, I don't, I don't think, I don't want them to get these poems, they want them, so I'll distract uh, the, the monks, and then you sneak under the rope and rip out some of those pages, he wants you to have them. Quote. 
Dear Hirsch, Corso came in drunk with Michael Pollard, also drunk who also got me bounced by the bartender for taking a swing at the bouncer. Tuxedo, Alan got at the Lower East Side Salvation Army clothing store for a few dollars. Alan going to teach for two weeks in Europa, Boulder, and continue poetry readings in Wyoming, and then play at the Troubadour in LA in May. April, I'll be up at the farm planting nut trees. Good to see you. Love, Peter. A shirt of the first blue, a tie of the first and last blue, and all else should be cerulean. Peter is the best love, and he will have his own dove. And told me some strange things. He said everybody is green, and trees are blue, and hills are wheelbarrows turned inside out. and the tea will seem golden. Oh, oh, Mara, where did you go? What did you do with your human cry? The wine you drank when I was 14, you beat your head on the ground. I stood nearby watching this. In the tears I remember most, the yells forgotten. My age disappeared. I wanted you to stop. I even got mad at you for banging yourself so. So I threw you in bed, but you kissed me goodnight. Night has made lonely dances in your head. Cigarette ashes dry up your tears. I'm older now. I could put my arm around you if you were to cry again. So, Ma, cry like you used to. Let's go through that sadness again. More agony, Ma.